So scream events are a thing now for moms who are battling stress at home. And admittedly, I think everybody is, is battling stress. Um, and so these moms are taking to the streets and they're going to public parks and they're gathering together just to hold scream events where they just scream publicly to get out some of their frustration. Now I'd say among things to do, this is probably a pretty harmless thing, but uh, the real question is why are these moms screaming? So I'll show you a little bit of that in this clip. My house felt narrow. I felt like the walls were caving in on me and I just felt like there was no place to go. And you had a six month old on your hip. I had a six month old on my hip. I had a four year old and um, a six year old who was in kindergarten. So nobody was in school and keeping them entertained throughout the day and while changing diapers it, and nursing um, was insane. I feel really guilty and I don't know the right thing to do a lot of the time. I just work and my daughter, I have no time for me. So on frosty mornings, these women are gathering together to scream publicly. And one can't help but wonder, while there is a legitimate source of frustration perhaps that can come from small children, even your own, uh, perhaps it could be that we need to reevaluate the way we look at motherhood and the way we look at children. When COVID hit, these working moms, they were forced into a position to care for their kids while juggling their jobs. So these moms take out their frustration with these scream events. So here's the real deal, or at least the question that I have. Of course, people need to let off steam. And like I said, this is probably as gentle a way as, as one can do it and probably somewhat therapeutic. But the real question I have is, why do these moms have to scream so much? Perhaps these moms are feeling very justified stress because of generations of women who have told mothers that motherhood is secondary to their career and that children are the unha unfortunate happenstance of sex. And then we told them that all of their woes could be eliminated from pleasure seeking because we've got a pill to take care of that. So now COVID has forced these women to do what past generations of women were hardy enough to do without an issue, to take care of their kids. Now these women are juggling too much and they're frustrated because they're also juggling nine to fives on top of that. And now they're mystified by the fact that they're stressed out. Perhaps they listened too long to a vocal minority of people who proudly told them what to do, all while claiming that no one should ever tell a woman what to do. But life has a way of slapping us in the face because some had to prove that they were smarter than these realities. We as a culture boldly sh stuck our chin out and dared reality to hit us. Now it has and grown women are screaming in parks and waking up all the patients at Arkham Asylum. Still, we're doubling down and we're dedicated to lying to ourselves so much that this vocal minority has even allowed us to, to entertain the idea that men can participate in womanhood. Second wave feminists dismiss the important work of the first wave by demanding that not only they see equality, but the abolition of the sexes. All while gender differences reaffirm traditional roles in marriage and deny that gender is a social construct. And then bio biology forces women into breastfeeding and shows that men are less naturally suited to be caretakers. So for the longest time, we've told ourselves, the Bible is antiquated, oppressive. Yet, we keep being pulled back into its teachings in a way that would cause even the most entrenched skeptic to get really honest. We pacified ourselves with verbiage about the relative nature of truth and cried out for freedom, not recognizing that the rails keep us on the track. Since we've rejected those truths, we've derailed our lives and we're so far from it that we found oppression of past generations is nothing like the prison we're creating for ourselves today. And so here are a group of women screaming like mad people in the park. You know why? Because we are being driven mad. We've cut off our nose to spite our face and then we've laughed about it. This is the behavior of the mentally ill. So here's the point. This is not to suggest that all women need to be stay-at-home moms. This is merely to point out the fact that when we suggest things like traditional marriage and traditional roles in marriage, and we suggest that women have a role to play that men can't play, and then we vilify those kind of things. And again, this is not to say that women can choose to play whatever role they want. It's just simply to suggest that when we see the evidence 
that proves to us that perhaps we might have had a point with some of those things that we were saying in the past about the roles of men and women, perhaps it's worth reinvestigating and reevaluating to see perhaps if all of the stress and the pressures that are coming upon us as a society are because we're kicking against those truths and trying to pretend as though they don't exist. And so now we're telling ourselves that it's bad to believe those things, where in past generations it's actually helped women really become good, robust mothers, which by the way is a superpower. I guess that's all I'm saying at the end of the day is that if we're going to villainize motherhood, don't be surprised when motherhood gets a screaming. You can catch brand new episodes of Indie Thinker with Reed Uberman every Monday and weekly bonus episodes to keep you thinking throughout the week. But you have to subscribe and click the bell to be notified when new episodes drop. If you enjoy this content, make sure to like this video and share it with friends.